Attorneys, choose the career path you want. And we're back with another episode. I am speaking again with Robert Graff, attorney at thegraffstandard.com. Rob, what are we talking about in this episode? Well, we've talked about courtroom appearances, and it's really at this point you can choose whether you want to make courtroom appearances a part of the process of your career, or you can choose a career where you don't have to go to court, and either is okay. It's about making a conscious choice as to which one you want to choose. I like choices. Choices are good. So let's talk about the three main points we're going to hit in this episode today. So fire away. Today we're going to look at uh, determining which areas of law are best suited for your personality, creating a practice that encompasses those areas of law, and being able to turn down clients, even though it might be good money, that are outside of that practice area. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, let's 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 get to the first one then. So personality, I like things that have to do with personality. So determine which areas of law are, the, are best suited for your person. How am I going to do that? What do I do to uh, start looking at that? Well, it, it's, it's about knowing yourself. Uh, know As much as you can know yourself, the better. If you're a person that's just a shy person, if you're a quote-unquote introvert, whatever that means to you, Showing up to court might not be a good thing for you. If you are, as again, a person that likes research, that likes to sit behind a desk all day, then showing up to court might not be that type of person for you. But if you like going to court, if you like putting on that show, if you like interacting with adversarial attorneys in a very adversarial setting and clients that aren't always the best people, then going to court may be that type of area for you if you like that charged excitement. I know for myself, I I do a lot of writing. I don't really like writing legal work. I like writing when I write my blogs, but writing briefs, I'm not a huge fan of that. Some attorneys love doing it. Some attorneys only do appellate work because they know that that's the area where they want to practice. So it's about learning which part of your personality and which part of your interests really fit the area of law you want to practice. Now Rob, I know that in your work as a coach working with legal attorneys, you use a particular tool sometimes, uh, this energy leadership index. Is that a valuable way to to help people look at personality and how it plays into these different parts of law? It, it does. Um, it really lays out a blueprint for the work that I do because it shows why who you are at that time and your level of engagement in what you do and your level of mm. leadership in what you do. So if you are a person that's sitting behind a desk and all you've wanted to do to go to court, I, I can think that your level of engagement in your current occupation, in your current life is going to be rather low. So then you're looking to see what opposite things you can do. And so it's a starting point to see where are you at that point? What is your level of success? What is your level of engagement? What is your level of consciousness mm. in what you're doing at this current point in time? And then when you take it again, when you've made all these conscious choices, when you've made that choice to move forward to a different area of the law or a different aspect of your career, or even saying, hey, you know what, this area of law isn't so bad and I actually do really like what I do, you take it again and see where you've grown and how you've grown and where that level of engagement is at the time. Excellent. That sounds like a great way to go. Now, I know that you talk about you know, creating a practice that, you know, allows you to build a practice around these areas that you're best suited to do. So how is it that, how do you advise people to do that and uh, you know what does that sort of look like as you as you focus on that? Well a lot of it is making a list and starting looking for that ideal. What is your ideal practice? What does it include? What doesn't it include? And how close are you to that at this point? Once you figure that out, you can start imagining what would be best for you. Imagine a life that you actually enjoy going to work. Imagine a a client I mean, you're looking for an ideal law practice. Well, what's your ideal client? Is your ideal client going to be somebody that shows up and says, I want you to do scorched earth litigation? <laughs> if that's not the type of attorney that you want to be, then those aren't the type of clients for you. But it's about knowing who is that type of a client and what is that ideal to know what type of work. If you say, look, I really like dealing with people that you know, have to make hard life choices after a family member dies. You know, I've always been interested in that type of work. I really like watching Six Feet Under on TV. Maybe you want to do Wills in the States. I don't know. <laughs> That's for you to figure out. But if you've always been interested in law and order, and I can't say law and order is the best example of a courtroom, but maybe you want to be a, a trial attorney that does criminal defense. It's about looking at those aspects of why you're doing what you're doing and what is the most 
exciting thing. How can you have fun with what you're doing? And how can you enjoy the work that you're doing? And that's about how you determine the law of practice you want to have. So part of it is understanding, you know, your personality and understanding what gives you energy as opposed to just burns your energy, but then also understanding that you have the power to steer your career and that you, mm -hmm. you have choices that you have to make in order to start to move yourself in the right direction so that you've got a good fit between who you are and what you do. At least that's what I hear you saying, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and in steering who you are and making those choices, it really gets to the third point in, in being able to turn down clients that don't fit those areas. Yeah, yeah. Talk more about that because I, I think this is hard for people, especially if they're early in their career. You know, they're like, oh my God, what are you talking about? Turn down a client. <laughs> and and being, being a solo practitioner myself, it's hard to turn away money. I'd love to bring every client in and say, sure, I can do this work. I recently, I, I have a client that I realized I can't represent this client to the best of my ability because I just don't understand this area of the law well enough. I got some advice from people and my response was when I got this advice, what are you talking about? So in the amount of research that I did, we're, let me take this back, we're all supposed to be generalists, but we can't all be generalists about everything. It's not Jeopardy. We can't win mm -hmm. every right. single day. <laughs> um, but what we can do is we know our limitations. So when we know our limitations on the type of area of law that we can practice and want to practice in, we can refer the cases out. That's about building a network. That's about why we have a network of attorneys, classmates, colleagues that we know that we can refer these cases to because if you're not representing a client to the best of your abilities, then the client's not going to be happy and you're not going to be right. happy with what you do. So about turning that client away, even though you know that you could make money after doing 10 hours of research and 15 hours of semi working on whatever you need to do, it's about knowing what fits your type of practice that you want to practice in. So if you want to go to court and you want to go every day and somebody comes to you and says, hey, write me a will, and that's going to take away from your time, sure, maybe you can write a will. might not be the best will, but you could probably write a will. But I, I'd advise you to turn that client away and say, hey, I know somebody else that can do this. Vice versa, if somebody comes to you and says, hey, I want you to go to court for me, and all you do is write wills and that's all you ever do, you do estate planning, then it's okay to turn that client away if you can't do that and you can't practice the best of your ability because it creates anxiety for you. Those aren't the type of clients that you want to have. So it's about creating that practice that really fits that personality and saying, it's okay, other clients will come. The person might actually end up respecting you more for saying, hey, you know what, this just isn't yeah. my area. And they can come to you later when it is something that's in your area. Well, and the other bonus I hear in in what you're describing, Rob, is that you're really developing referral partnerships too with uh, with other specialty attorneys. So you're referring to out what is not your specialty, but that also gives you an opportunity to chat with that colleague and say, hey, if you get more court, you know, if you're getting if you're sending that will to an estate attorney, say, if you got you know if a court uh, case shows up and you need somebody, you we can trade essentially. We can uh, exactly. So exactly. yeah, different practice areas for different folks, and that's all right. And it's about accepting that. Hey that's all right. We don't, we can't do everything. We we're told as attorneys we can, we can't do everything and that's okay. Well, hence the title of this segment, attorneys choose your, the, the career path that you want, right? Uh, yes. But the choice is the important part is, is to, is to realize it's an active choice. It's a, it's based on your personality. It's based on your skills. It's based on, on moving in the direction that you want to move and not just letting it happen. Cause, uh, I, I'll botch the quote. I mean, there's some quote somewhere about, you know, if you, if you don't choose the things that you're going to do, somebody else is going to choose for you, and it's not likely to be what you want, right? It's going to be what yeah, they exactly. want. So. Exactly. Good stuff, Rob. So I know that you work with attorneys in your coaching practice to help them develop this kind of more powerful courtroom presence if that's uh, the direction that they're moving in. And we mentioned the, uh, the Energy Leadership Index is, is a part of doing that. So I just want to wrap up here and then tell people what's coming up here. So we We've been talking today about the three main things uh, of this episode, which is you know looking at your personality and determining the which areas of the law you're best suited to be working in, and then starting to steer your practice, creating your practice around those areas of the law, and then having the the clarity to turn down you know the clients that are not a good fit, so that you really are developing a specialty, referring out what's not a good fit, and attracting more of the right fit uh, back at you from uh, from those potential referral partners even. Uh, good stuff. So I know that uh, we're doing a whole series 
on uh, you know this building your powerful courtroom presence. What do people want to? What's the most important thing for people to know to do, Rob, if they want to not miss any future episodes? Just click below, give me your email address, uh, sign on up, and you'll receive an email, personally a personalized email saying, "Hey, here's the today's uh, video. Here's today's written blog." An autographed copy of the the Rob uh, Rob Graf Graf Standard uh, official next blog post, but there's more. You know, I feel like I feel like uh, you know I'm doing a TV commercial. <laughs> but wait, there's more. You know, there is more actually. Rob is also going to be giving you a, a very special offer for a limited time. We mentioned the Energy Leadership Index that other people charge over four hundred dollars to to do. Uh, Rob doesn't charge over four hundred dollars to have you do that. Uh, you're going to discover a very uh, nice discount in that email that Rob's going to send you when you sign up down below here. So make sure you sign up right now. Don't miss out on future episodes as we continue talking about how to get that attorney swagger when you got to walk into that courtroom. Compliments of Rob Graf of Graf Standards. So until next time, thanks Rob. Have a good one.